Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Ven and Gueso podcast. Uh, as always, I'm your moderator, Adam. Uh, I'm here with Vendigal and Gueso. And uh, we're actually coming with a different, I would say, a different, uh, I'd say, well, it's clearly a different topic, but it's a different Camp, like a different uh how, how can i say this approach a different approach to a, an episode today it's not going to be um it's not going to be like focused on what the leader should be doing what the church should be doing but it should be it's like advice that Correct. that christians can use and people who are not christians some uh, sound advice yeah some sound advice uh with examples from the scripture but also examples from our real life yes it's important so that to always, people understand. always bring it uh bring the real life factor exactly it's, it's important awesome that. Yep. Yeah. so i think with that said uh go ahead guys take it hey. away well i don't know like we, we, i think we had a good day today i mean i could complain but nobody listens so yeah. what's the point that's, that's what happens when you get married yeah. you know after 30 years yep uh and counting. Actually, what you do is, uh, is, is what you find is you find a good friend that is able to listen to your complaint because yep. nobody else listens to your complaint. Right, right, right. You know, so that's what happened. Uh, I have a question about the, uh, the the listening part, even on good friends. You know, uh, I mean, I w- literally was, we were just eating dinner not too long ago and uh, Adam was telling me something about something that happened to one of the church members and i was like uh-huh 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 and then he's he he just looked at me and says did you just ignore everything i said i said no 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 i i i, I heard some, some of it, of it. <laughs> some of it oh some my god that's, you know that's, 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 you know it's it's like that that joke that the guy used to have a girlfriend and uh she left him because he would never listen and when he was explaining he said i don't know i wasn't listening to what she said oh but, my god oh, that's uh, terrible yeah i mean you get those people right so in in your life, in my life, everybody's life, um, you'll you'll come across people who uh, become really good friends. You got family members, and you know you can't choose family. You're born into a family, that, that so correct, you can't yeah. choose it. Um, and it, it's always a good idea to look for ways to have that peace to to actually meet somebody in the middle, if I may use that term. Well. Van, I think that part of what we do, uh, we were meant to interact. We were meant to socialize. Uh-huh. So you bring a point of as far as like the factor of family. But I believe that everyone should have friends outside family. So you can have friends. Mm-hmm. You know, you have family members like you're my brother. Mm-hmm. We're best friends. But right. it's okay to also have someone who's not Melendez, mm-hmm. but I can consider my friend. Right. You know, that I can hang out. Uh, play dominoes, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Monopoly, you know, right, things like that. Right, I um, those are hard to come by, though. They are, they are, and 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 as a Christian person, um, we we want to give you some advice on on how to keep those and how to make them flourish. Yes. Um, also, how to make yourself available. Um, I I think that's one of the things that really affects some of the people in the church. Um, because they, they, they don't want to venture out or they, or they, they're, afraid. They're, they're being taught like, you know, get out of void. I used to have a friend or a coworker, not a friend, but a coworker, um, who was a Jehovah witness. Oh, okay. And, um, they're very strict in many yeah. things. Well, I mean, and I'm not judging. I, I don't care. I mean, no. it's, if it's your life, that's what you've chosen. I, I, I pray that you would get out of that, that terrible mindset. But I mean, if that's what you want to do, then, you know, more power to you. That That's it. But yeah. I, I always found it fascinating that he would tell me, oh, I went I went fishing over the weekend. And how was your weekend? And I said, well, no, I stayed home or did this or whatever. But I went, he would always tell me he went fishing with, with somebody, a friend of his, and this, that, and the other. And, and, and he, he would tell me, I would see him throughout the week, and he would always say, it was always fishing. He would always go fishing. Um, and, and I asked him, I said one time, hey, do you uh, – do you, you guys only fish together? Do you fish with other people? And and he hit me with this. He said, well, you know, we, we tend to just uh, fish with witnesses because the, the Bible says that we shouldn't mingle with other people. And then I said, well, of course I didn't say this to him because that, that's his belief. That's what he thinks. And, mm-hmm. and in reality, if you want the very first advice, don't sit there and argue. Don't, the, yeah. don't don't try to change somebody's mind. Yeah, don't try to do that. But I I questioned it myself, and I said, "How can you possibly 
if you want to. Now, let, let's just say, let's imagine for a second that this particular person knows the truth. But what are you doing there? I am trying to imagine it. Don't, don't forget, if I get too deep, I might forget my address. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, I see, I see. Um, so let's just imagine, without you forgetting your address, yes. that this guy knows the truth. And he's trying, you know, he claims that he knows the truth. He, he, he goes to the Jehovah Witnesses. He, he, in, her, in his head, he thinks, I know the stuff that I need to know. How do you share that with other people? If one of the main things that you're taught is that you have to shun people, that you can only hang out with right. people who who go to the same mm -hmm. or are Jehovah practice, Witnesses practice too. Practice the same concept. Uh, that's, How do you reach other people then? First of all, let me take to your event. Uh, that must be, that has to be the most boring life that you can imagine. Because if if my social circle Uh, it's going to be only people of my same belief. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a problem because that is not exactly what the word says, just to start off. There's no exchange of ideas. No, and, and, but also interaction because you, we, I don't want to go back to the metaphors, but what I'm trying to tell you is that we, were suppo we are supposed to be interacting with people. Like today, today, it, what we're doing today, Ven, okay. it, it, I wanted to take you to a Home Depot, okay? Uh, you're going to buy some miracle Grow. You're going to buy some, uh, a little one of those utensils. You're going to buy uh, gloves. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start teaching you a little bit of how to cultivate good friendships. Yeah. You know that? Because, okay, and, and, and number one, stay away from the mindset that it has to be only religion think-wise. Yeah. No, no, we are, we are, Or we are politics. No politics. Yeah. No, no, we are supposed to mingle with people. Yep, a hundred percent. And I mean, what did if we want to get technical? Jesus said when he prayed, and we have mentioned this. If you've watched the yeah, other okay. episodes, yep. and please do. If you've watched some of the episodes, you'll see that we talk about Jesus's prayer and John. Yep. And he says, I, they're supposed to be in the world. I don't want to take them away from the world. We're not supposed to not live with everybody. We have to live with everybody. We have to, you got to pay the same taxes as everybody else. Yep. You got you to gotta go shop in the same places. They don't have, they don't have uh, my religion only places for you to go shop. I mean, yeah. you still got to go but, to the but, but Vin, places did you, that you shop at. But, 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 but Vin, did you imagine... Uh, We're not bashing anybody, but did you imagine if my mindset is that I'm going to get out of my house, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to Tops or supermarket, I'm just going to talk to myself, uh -huh. I, I, I'm, I'm going to grab the meat, the beans, the rice, I will not socialize with anyone, I will use my own self-checkout, mm -hmm. I will get into my car and go back home. If that, that is the concept that, that's of what a pretty you, lonely life. That's a lonely, but you know something? That is what we see today. Mm -hmm. And it's very sad because I think that people are just afraid yeah. to, 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 to interact with people. They are afraid to establish friendships. Mm -hmm. And we are supposed to establish friendships. Uh, not, out, not only in the church, but even outside the church. Uh, if yeah. you remember when we were growing up, Mm -hmm. I can we can go back way way back when we were mm -hmm. what nine and ten. Well, first of all, according to our children, that's when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's true. There are a bunch of jerks. Yeah, and it is our present, but eventually will be uh, at some point. But what I'm trying to say, Ben, is I'm that, sorry. Uh, but, but the thing is, Adam, that mm -hmm. we were always very socialized. We were always at the uh, at the forefront. When it comes to friends, we we did we did and, yeah. and and it was, it seemed to be pretty easy uh, during that time for people to socialize because everybody was out. Yes, like you have these things now, which are wonderful tools. Yeah. They're just great tools, but they also have an effect that it, it's it's a separating effect. It's yeah. just isolation, mm -hmm. people, and then you had something like COVID. When COVID happened, yeah, yeah. a lot of people just uh, just became hermits. You know, they just 
disappear from from society and all that and that's that's what we want to talk about today yeah, we yeah. want to we want to give you some advice on how to get out of that stuff and and how to avoid it maybe even see it when it's happening and and there's no better way to do that than to use our own lives as an example yep. and then bring it to the light of the word i i agree i agree and, and, and you know what and we can give you a great example not so long ago when i was uh, with my wife at applebee's mm -hmm. and next to us There was a family, and I'm going to say it was a father and a mom, and I think it's like two kids or three kids. And I sat there. Typically, when I go to mm -hmm. Applebee's or something, I always put my phone away because I'm not interested in, you know, I like to talk to my wife. Right, right. Uh, and, but this particular night, I was there, and I was looking, and I remember that everyone was looking down. And they were on their phone. At the same table. At the same table. And uh, the father... Literally, I've done that before. The father texted mm -hmm. the kid what the kid wanted to eat. Wow. And these people are next to me. And I'm looking at this. And, wow. and, and, and again, Ben, like you said, this is a phenomenal great tool. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, and we're not criticizing it, but, but if you're not smart, mm -hmm. you can find yourself. Well, the phone will take your smart. Yeah. And then it becomes, that, that's a smartphone, but the user is not. Exactly. And, 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 he, and he, he, it, it just overtakes, overwhelm. Mm -hmm. And that is not, I, 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 one of the best things to, to establish a good friendship is to, you have to work, you have to cultivate the mm -hmm. thing. And that's how you start. Right. So what, one of the things that I would, I would say that one of the first things that you could do is, um, and this is a practice that I've, I've done many, many years, um, Find something that you have in common. That is a great point. Yes. So, um, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Well, I, no, not at all. Okay. So, uh, for those of you who, who don't know, and it doesn't matter because I'm not important, but this guy right here, uh, about 80 pounds ago, because I do not measure time by years or anything. Like, I measure oh. it by weight, by pounds. Oh, wow. So, 80 pounds ago, I used to be a police officer. Wow. And when I was in the police force, um, during the academy time, time that I was there and all that, they, they, they go over these things and they tell you, you should probably work on your general culture. Okay. Okay. That so, makes sense. Um, general culture is a, it, it, it's something that basically explains or, or, or thinks or shows that you should know a little bit about everything. Yes. Okay, You don't have to be an expert in everything, but you should have enough knowledge to hold a conversation. Now, this is as a police officer, okay? Um, if you're a police officer, you're talking to everybody. Yes. You're talking to everyone. So a police officer cannot be an introvert. No, you, can, no, you, you no. cannot be an introvert if you're a police officer because you, you have to be outgoing and you have to tell people what to do and direct them and, and all. so you have to be able to talk but you will have you'll be working places that you're sitting or you're standing for 10 hours and the best thing you can do uh is to people watch and speak to the to the public that is an effective police officer engages people so, so right? what you're saying is that an effective person who wants to build uh friendships around within the church or outside the church you have to be able to take risk meaning You, you, like, like for example, like, like what I do is uh, I observe people. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say um, Adam comes to me and I see that Adam has a teacher of button warfare. Okay, now I, I, I'm assuming that he's a gamer. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to interact with him on the line or say something about, you know, yep. I, I start know off with the shirt. Yeah, I like uh, your shirt. It's like, I like your shirt, you know, and then you go from there. Right. But it, it, we're supposed to do that. It's part of being socializing. Well, and, yeah. listen to this. So I, Now, now, like I said, 80 pounds ago, I used to be a police officer, right? Um, so 80 pounds later, I'm now an instructor. Okay. Right? So during my classes, I always, I start the class by introducing myself. And I have a board on the back that has all my information. And I always say, my name is so-and-so. I like to go by Ven. And then I look everyone in the eye and say, you know how many people call me Ven? Nobody. And immediately... What do I get? What reaction do you think I get? You get some laughter. Uh, right. So w when you, when you want to build any kind of friendship, you want to you have any kind of interaction with someone, 
you have to learn how to take risks, as yes. you said. Yes. But the other thing is, uh, you have to make yourself a bit vulnerable. Yes, yes, you like, have don't, to. Don't come across as the person who, who immediately wants to dominate the conversation. Um, no one, first of all, no one cares for a know-it-all. No. That's why I have no friends. <laughs> but but you can see the difference when when we were little and, and and Adam is here Adam can share with us the difference of how you build friendship in the 20, in the 2000s 2020 if you will yeah versus building friendships uh in 1990 1987 1975 yeah. um when the mindset was not as obscure yeah. Right. Uh, when when you weren't afraid of play basketball, like, and I give you an example, a good friend. Uh, when we were when we were growing up, uh, we wanted to play baseball. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had to go to a little tournament within the tournament to find out who can play baseball. Right. Uh, if you didn't make it, no one went home crying. That we was, just yeah. you, no, we just were like, okay, I didn't make it. But but next time. See, today, I don't understand how everyone has to go to the playoffs. Yeah. Well, and, and if you... Does that make sense? It, and now, nowadays... Um, it's too fragile. A, 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 everyone has to get some sort of trophy for participation. And yes. It's like, no, uh, when I was growing up, you had to win. You had to win. If you get the trophy, it's because you won. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But, you don't but, get a participation trophy. But this, that's, why, that's why I bring that, that, that concept that when you want to build a friendship with somebody, mm-hmm. uh, they say you find common ground. You take some risks, mm-hmm. but you don't jump in the water immediately. You just start figuring, you know, okay, so let me right. see, you know, how this person is. Then you find a common ground. And the first the first thing you put in the pot is risk. Mm-hmm. The second one you got to put is respect. Right. You got to respect the other person the way they are. And you know what you got to do? Trust. And then that's the number three. That's, yep. that's the third thing you put in the pot. That's right. You got to trust. Trust. So, and, and trust is built by, you know, we talk to each other. Right. And don't, don't think, not only the know it all, but don't, don't try to pretend that you're better than the other person. No. That, no that's no, no, going to no, no, kill no. the seed immediately. It's very difficult doing that when you are a Christian. Yes. And I can give you guys my examples because um, recently I've started working at when I started at this job. I have a tendency of not talking to my coworkers, right? Because I always use the excuse of like I'm there to work, I'm not there to socialize, you know. So right. I don't want to. You avoid problems by not being involved, and so that's my kind of my mindset. Also, another mindset that I use is that I stay quiet. Until I realize, like, I recognize, like, okay, this is what this person likes to joke about. This, like, what what are my limits? Because when I was younger, I used to have that problem of putting my foot in my mouth. And nobody liked me. So I was like, let me, you know, um, gauge people first. So you're testing the waters testing first. Testing the waters to see what it is that they okay. do. And recently, this job that I have, um, the coworkers that I have, I've been able to make friends with them a lot faster. And um, I tr- like truly do love them because they are they make working there fun, and I've I've, I've never really um, done this before where I was able to hang out with somebody outside of work. And as a Christian, you got to kind of like because you can do everything right. There's nothing that is prohibited for you. To, you know, that's Correct. not like an actual sin. Like you are able to Correct. hang out with, with them. Right. Um, but I do have to know o- my unless, own limits. Unless you're religious, right? Because that's, that's my thing, is that like there's no way that I can reach them. If I truly did love them, like I'm saying that I do, there's no way that I can reach them um, without my me looking like a, if, if, if I was trying to be all religious and telling them, well, what you're doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. Because no, number one, nobody wants to hear that. And number two, the people that we're reaching out to, they are sick and tired of people of being told that. So they go to these extremes because in these extremes, they feel like they are not being told that. So they can do that. So it's difficult because I want to hang out with them. But I also have to understand, like, I'm a Christian, so there's certain things that I can't do. But I shouldn't make that their problem. You know, because I'm Correct. a Christian, Correct. I'm not going to, I don't know, like, cuss the way they, they like. They like cussing. I don't have a problem with cussing. You can cuss around me. I, I like jokes that mm-hmm. have cuss words in it. But I, myself, am going to refrain from using those words because I don't need yeah. to use those. Right. As an right. example, I'm not, you know, what, right. I'm not getting into, there's, like. There's some people that make, that, that there are Christians that make uh, non-Christians very uncomfortable. Exactly. Because they're like, oh, you know, you shouldn't talk like that because I'm here. It's like, buddy, you're, you're, you're still nobody. Yeah. You so. shouldn't, like, if, if you're seeing this and you're a Christian, 
that shouldn't be the way that you reach other people that are outside. No. Like if you're going to like, it's not, you can be friends with people who are non-believers. That's, I feel like that's yeah. the best way of you're able to convert them. Because when I talk to you about God, right. I didn't, you know, I didn't do that coming from the get go, trying to win you over to get well, your first money. of all, I, I don't have to talk to you. I rather show you exactly what True. it is to be a Christian. You, yeah. you speak louder with the action, but go ahead. Yeah, no, no, and that, that's, a, that's, I, I feel like, um, I have been able to, uh, navigate those orders a lot better now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, of course, reading the word and instructing myself uh, in the way that I should be, because I'm only accountable for my actions. And it's not like I'm sitting there like trying to be holier than everybody else. N- n- that's not the case. Right. But the thing is that I don't want to offend them. You know, I I, f- I feel like Christians have have th- they have this history of constantly being the reason why people are dead spiritually. I don't want to. Um, yeah. I don't want to contribute to that cause. So it, the difficulty is not because I have to worry about what they're doing. The difficulty is what I'm doing. Correct. Well, like how I wow. navigate that, that so that, that I'm not. That's pretty profound. There. That right there. that 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 is a, a, a when back in when we not first when we first arrived in New York then. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mentality of most people, it's that uh, all Puerto Ricans have to live uh, 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 in, in welfare. Okay, mm. this is back in the you know, mm-hmm. early '90s. Everyone associated, no one adapted to the new concept. So, what what I, what I tend to tell you is that when you have a mindset like that, uh, it's very difficult to not not to convert, but it's very difficult to tell people to to show them a different way. Mm-hmm. So, my my wife, she she works for Blue Cross or mm-hmm. for that company, and. Uh, Every year they do a, a Christmas party and they usually do it at Riverworks. Uh, over there, everyone goes there. Mm-hmm. Okay? Believe it or not, believe it or not, who do you think is the most likable person when everyone in that department goes there to have a good time? Is it her? Carol and I. Yeah. Because I can go to a place, I do not drink, but I can go to a place, mm-hmm. have a phenomenal time with people that are drinking. Mm-hmm. That's their lives. But I'm able to contribute and have a good time. And we don't have to talk about religion. No. Yeah. We can talk about Buffalo. We can talk about what's going on. And that is how you do it. Right. Problem is, is, that's why I bring up the concept. You have to shift that mentality. Right. And that's what we're trying to do tonight. Is like you need to understand you were meant to socialize. Mm-hmm. And to do that, you're not, I'm not going to sacrifice or, 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 or betray my belief. Because I get to sit down with five people that are talking about yeah. uh, sports and they're drinking a beer. How can I lose my salvation with something like that? Mm-mm. That makes no sense. Yeah, right. uh, we're not supposed to. So, so you have to build the trust. And then right. eventually the, and, but, something's going to happen. But Gueso, and, and what Adam was mentioning is phenomenal. I, I, I think that is very profound yeah, what you mentioned. The thing is that we have to start that. Yes. So in, in, that, in that relationship, and that friendship that you're trying to build, yeah. and this is this is the advice I suppose that, that we're giving you, mm-hmm. is, and it's definitely sound, is when you're building that trust, when you when you make yourself vulnerable and all that, you're the you are the one that has to take the first step. Always. So, uh, like I have made friends, that friendships that have lasted all my life, as yeah. long as I've met them, since I've met them, I have I have a friend of mine. Um, hopefully he, he's watching, um, who I went to the academy with. Oh, wow. We were in the same, in the same group. And we, we hit it off immediately because he loved anime at wow. the time. You see? So, we, so we, we started, now me, I love drawing. So he would see some of my art and he's like, oh my gosh, that's, that's phenomenal. It looks great. Uh, who do you like? And I told him, oh, one of my favorite all time is Fist of the North Star. That's a classic, oh, classic. He said... That's one of my favorites. Oh, there, there you go. go. Did and we this, just become best friends? Yep. Um, the funny thing is, to this day, every time he, if I post something on Facebook and he, he replies, he goes, Fist, because he calls me Fist. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So to this yeah. day, and that's 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago, but that we minute. made this friendship yeah. and but, it's still the but, same. But then, what about our friendship with we, we, um, a kid from, from, from Long Island? Um, Albert, Alberto, Alberto, yeah, dude. Alberto That's the one goes, with the Punisher. 
Yeah, yes. Yes. Birdo, and, birdo. and we started with I uh, started working with him at Toys R Us. I think yeah, it was. that's right, that's right. Wow. And then we got into the comics. Yep. And and, and you see what it. And then he, then then of course uh, JJ gave him a fat fat helmet. A fat helmet, yeah. Fat then, helmet yeah. Uh, nickname because he he used to drive this scooter, this weird so, scooter. So Birdo, we love you, man. Yeah, we, we love, love you. Man. you. <laughs> uh, Birdo was like a hundred pounds wet. Yes. Right. Real skinny. A lot of fun. He, yeah, he was a lot cool. of fun. Cool. To, and it's so funny because his birthday, my birthday, were always the same. Like yeah. you know, like he, I think he's the fifth. I was the the, the sixth. Yeah. So we we always hung out. So for for several years, what we used to do is uh, we would go together and buy each other a, a comic book or something because yes. we work together. But anyways, he would um he would show up in this uh, scooter. Yes. And he had this helmet that he would <laughs> wear, and the helmet. I mean, if you've seen the Flintstones. Yes. Gazoo, Gazoo. <laughs> that was that was. You know, he just had a child, man. I. No, really? But he is. A, he's a great guy. He's you know? a great guy. He's, he's such a great but, guy. But, he was always cool. You know, we. But then it's, it's the beauty of of friendship because when you put trust, when you put respect, and you put that in the pot, yeah. You know yeah. what you create? You create memories. Yep. And there's nothing better than life. That's what that's what unites people. The memories, because yeah. then you share jokes. I remember when he broke that he was the, the turn signal that he broke it because he, oh, thought, he, he, yeah. he thought that he, tur- he turned it on yeah. and he's like, come on, come on. And then he came home with the turn signal stick on his hand. He goes, I don't know how to fix it. So it's, it's but there's the beauty of it is there's, you have to have something in common with somebody. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, you start building, like Adam said, you, you taste the water, you, you, you know, you wash the waters and then you go, you know what? It's cool. It's yeah. cool. And then you just gotta be just gotta and go jump it, into and it. We get it. It's not easy at first. No, okay? it's not easy at first. And it and it becomes it can, it can become even daunting if you're a Christian, yes. right? Yes. So to give a, a biblical example, if I may, so we, we were talking before we started. We we're talking about David and Jonathan. Yes, that's a great example. And David, God had lifted him up. He had great victories, and people used to sing. Saul killed thousand, but David could kill ten thousand. Yes, you know, and and so the king got really jealous, and he meant to kill him. Meant King Saul wanted to kill David. Jonathan was King Saul's son. Yes, but Jonathan and David, the Bible says that their hearts became as one because yes. they he loved them so much. He was such a good friend, and you can find friendships like that. A hundred percent, you can and find them. So. He told David, hey, listen, you stand over there, and if, if I throw the arrow and I tell my servant to go further, that means you need to get out because yep. my father means to kill you tonight. That's true. And he told him, and, and he saved his life. And he, later on, Jonathan died. They killed him. And David went and annihilated the people who killed Jonathan. Yep. And he cried and, and, and cried and cried for his brother. So it, it is possible for you to find that one person who is not even related to you who becomes your brother. Yeah, brother, yeah. We, we have an uncle who is not our uncle, but he's dad's best friend since, since he was a kid. Tio Rafi. Yeah, yeah. And they, he went to Vietnam. He came back. He, he, he got all messed up over there. And, uh, but... As, as as long as I have been alive, he's always been my uncle. Yeah, that's how, and that's because this is it's built upon you. You you see that all the time, and you yeah. became, you familiarize yourself with that person. And mm-hmm. and I think that as not just believers, it's just as a, as a son of vice, is mm-hmm. it, you have to be able to create friends. Yes. and and friends are are, are amazing because you know what the Bible says, Ben. Yeah, mother mother and brother. Hey, mother and brother. A friend could be more than a brother in the time yeah. of need, and a time, and, and that's the the beauty of it is that we're supposed to do that, and yeah. and we started off with this example that we're not. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the idea of me getting in the car, going to buy, going back home, home and not yeah, and not talk to anyone. Yeah. You know that, that is that. I'm sorry, but that's pathetic. You know, and, and that's that's is today. it normal? And that is not, and that is not biblical. Is it normal for um? Well, no, nah, I don't say if it's normal. I feel like everyone has a specific case, but in my life, as an example, I feel like I don't have a lot of Christian friends. What I, ha- I mean, I have my, 
uh, the church, the people that I know from church, and then the people who have been in my life before that have been Christians. But most of the friends that I have, they they are either they're not believers or they were believers at one point and they stopped. Okay, okay. And um, it's I have been having issues, not issues, but um, I've noticed that like I know God works for a reason. And he brings these people close to me for Correct. a reason. Correct. Because I know that while they might not be able to fight those battles, that's what I'm there for. Mm-hmm. So I have my group of my core friends that I have known all my life. I don't even remember meeting them. That's how oh, I, that's how long I've known them. I've known them since we were in Pampers. Uh, and I, I could say that not, none of them are like believers to the point where they go to church every day. They do believe that there's a God. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're not like... They're very Christian. respectful, very of, resp- 100%. of of our beliefs, because they're yeah. my friends too. But they're yeah. not as close to me as they are to you. Yeah, you know? and the thing is that, like, uh, as a, as a Christian, maybe if, when I was younger, it would have been a thing of like, you know, you get indoctrined at at a church that you have to preach it to them, and you got to stick the Bible down their throats, and uh, on, on, you know, unfortunately, there's friendships that end because of that. Uh, at school, there was an example when I was in high school. There was a kid who uh, wasn't a Christian at first, and then he became a Christian. But he became like jaja mm-hmm. tabla, and like le sacó el cuerpo a todo el mundo, and like no, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing that, and then like became alienated, you know. And it's like, dude, you did that to yourself. That's not what we're called to do. But then, but then, who's taking advantage of who? So they, see, yeah. I will questioning that that person's belief from the perspective that wait a minute, but who is teaching you? These crazy yeah. ideas, mm-hmm. because if we are supposed to in, we're supposed to socialize yeah. wherever we go. We're supposed to be alienated, but not alienated by the people we're supposed to be helping. No. We're supposed to be alienated by the people who are supposed to be the ones helping. You know, like Jesus was alienated by the Pharisees, the people who are supposed to be preaching right. and practicing this religion. But what, what happens is that your your way of life, yeah, exposes them. Not only mm-hmm. that, and that that's what happens. No, no, and they, no, they, they, and it, they it tend to have some sort them. of, of course, and they, they feel like I'm offended. And usually, those are the people that hold some sort of power. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but what they, the power that they hold, isn't real power. It's a make believe power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because freedom and love, love, love is definitely the most powerful thing ever. Yes. And and to your point, our job here on Earth is to be a blessing to people regardless. Right? Yes. We have said this so many times, yes. and I will yeah. continue to say it. Yeah, it is. Because we have this, sadly, and, and a lot of times we end up going back to the leaders that are teaching these things because, in fact, they are the people responsible. I mean, it starts from the head. That's yes. who, yeah. They are You're the, the people teaching. responsible for spewing this garbage that, that you need to be this way or that way or whatever, that, that you need to, that people can only be this way or from these type of churches or from our denomination and everybody else is lost and it's like first of all you, you're not a judge you don't even know who's going to make it to heaven because it's not up to you yep. it has never been up to you and the only thing that's ever been up to you is to be a blessing to people well then not, not to go too much into the bible uh, paul shows the best example he looked around. He goes like, okay, when I'm with the Greeks, I act like a Greek. He's not selling himself out. He's, no. a, he's still Apostle Paul. When I'm with the Jews, when, I, when I'm with the Jews, I act like, you know, like it's not that you're selling. It's not that like you're, it's not a facade. Because mm-hmm. I could be Nelson wherever I go. I could be Wessel wherever I go. Correct. And still be myself. Right, right. Problem is that to build friendships, you need to you need to think outside religion. You you need to take away the book for a moment, mm. okay, and be able to talk to people. Right. Be I, able. I don't to, know if you've noticed, but we, we seem to find that religion is always is the, the culprit. Yeah. The culprit. Yeah. It, it, it's a problem. Like like imagine this. Imagine working eight hours in an office of three people, and I'm a religious person who I'm not allowed to in socialize with anyone do you adam do you have any idea what we're gonna do in eight hours can i be quiet for eight hours in front of my computer and i know that you are next to me yeah yeah no 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 i i will lose my mind how about this how about this to your point have you ever had the displeasure of and yes i did say displeasure 
Um, of having to work with someone who's overly religious. Oh. Because I, the people that I have worked with, and this is, this is very common. When, when I was a technician in Erie, Pennsylvania, there was one of, one of the lead techs, one of the, the people in charge, he was, he was a Christian, right? And no one liked him. Oh, okay. Nobody liked this guy. Something yeah. is definitely and wrong with that picture. In his head, well, here's the thing. In his head, he thought that he was doing the right thing Because that's why people didn't like him. And I'm just looking back. I'm going, buddy, you failed the test, man. Yes. Because it's not, this isn't a popularity con contest. Right. It's not a matter that everybody has to like me. And please don't think that that's what we're trying to say. No. no. But here's the thing. I, I don't care if you don't like me or like me, but I'm still going to be a blessing to you. And, and if you're going to feel a certain way about me, it's not because I am making you. Right. Exactly. Just like me like that. I because I am just going to go out of my way every single time that I can to be a blessing to you. Uh, it, what does the Bible say concerning friendship and the love of a friend? That there is no greater love than for a friend to do what? To give the life to the, give to his life, life for his other friend. That's true. Who did that? The Christ. Christ did that. So now clearly. I mean, you could take it literal, right? And just go and die for somebody that, hey, if that's what you want to do, more power to you. It's not necessarily that. It's saying, if you can help somebody, then help them. Yeah. What does, what does the Bible say? Don't tell them that I will pray for you and send them their way. Right. No. If you have food, feed them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Feed them. That, that's a friend. A friend is someone who's going to be there for it's you. It's always going beyond, be, above and beyond. Yes. For yes. real, because you feel it. Like, in my job, most of the people there do not, they don't believe it in, like, they think that, like, they've had open conversations about how uh, they don't believe that religion is real. That's a waste of time. Okay. Right? If I was anybody else, that would have offended me, and I would have been like, how dare you speak about my thing here like that. But I, I know that they don't know. You know, I know that, Probably the information that they were given is incorrect because if they actually knew what it was about, it, it was it's to answer all the issues that they're having. It's to answer yes. all that depression. It's to answer all that anxiety. Right. But they don't know that. Right. They, well, they don't know that because uh, no one is modeling exactly. the idea of what Christ. Think about which, Christ which, for it, a moment. And which this is the thing about the podcast. This is the reason why we created it. it it's no, 100%, 100%. Not be, it, It's just to be able to be like, okay, listen, I know that you have been given this one thing, but there's also this other thing too here that yes. you should be listening to because that other person is crazy. Like, listen to what we have here because we're only bringing you experiences from our lives. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to share, you know, the the happiness that I have. This is the only way that I know how to do it. So, like, regarding them, when they start talking about that stuff, I just stay quiet. I, I let them air it out because I know God is just, like, he's giving me that opportunity to listen right. so at, that when I go... At, his, at the proper time. At the proper time because when it comes up and he ha is telling me to tell him exactly what to do, I have ammunition. Yes. This is what you don't believe in. This is what you don't believe in. It's okay. I have... This is, this is what God has to say about it. At the end of the day, we're not called here to convince people. No. Because we cannot convince ourselves to do things. You think that we're going to be able to convince other people? Literally, the, the word... Of hey, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> so the, the battery on the pod track here kind of died, so we had to cut real quick. Uh, but it, yeah. it happens. It yeah, happens. Yeah. Technology. Yeah. yeah, It's that beauty when it works. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But it's... Uh, it, what do they say? Uh, you know, you, you can't live with it and you can't kill it. Uh, that's what... <laughs> Is that what they say about technology or <laughs> wives? Oh, right, exactly. <laughs> so if you want to, I think oh, you were yeah. talking about working with a religious friend. So yeah, so we're gonna go back to that point. So we, so I, I had to work with this guy, and and I guess my point was, when you are hated, not because, not because of your relationship with Christ, but more so because you are a complete jerk about it. No one liked this guy. No, none of the technicians, none of that stuff. And, and that, is a, that is a thing that you see over and over and over. It's, it's this religious. Again, we go back to the same thing. Religion is always, the, it would always be the center of the problem. It's a, yeah. Uh, it, it's not about religion. It's never been about religion. I, I had a coworker. I recently reached out to him. I hope uh, that he's watching again. Okay. That's um, awesome. That's great. 
when I first met him, he, I, I, I was a supervisor and he was also a supervisor with me. And, and he was going through a lot. There was a lot of different things. And he opened up to me, you know, and I had, I was, at least I hope that I was a ray of hope in his life. And I remember this, we worked at this place and we worked overnights. And I remember within the first couple of weeks that we actually took the time to pray. And I pray for him and I pray for him. And I, and I told him, you're going to be, you're going to be you 2.0. All right. After this. And, and from that point, I saw him, there was a huge change in his life. He had, you know, he has some issues with, with, you know, the, a partner and he had issues with this and he had issues with that and God just started putting everything back together and his life started going in a different direction and I, I used to tell him I says you, you know you're you're you 2.0 but that's because of a friendship from a person who doesn't care for religion but cares about the that person. relationship and, and the person right. I I don't care if you believe the same thing as me but I'm still going to be a blessing to you yeah I remember Pastor Eric Johns had something like that too. That uh, he said that he used to like he has friends that are Muslim. He has friends that are other other things yes. too. That that shouldn't matter up until the point where we're talking about what we're believing. Like he says, like right. I, I love you very much. Yep. You have to understand that what you're doing is wrong. You know, but that's mm-hmm. that comes at a point. But there's no reason why. Right. I can't love you. You know, here's the thing, and and, and dare I say this, um, I too have coworkers who are. Muslim, and you find out that there's a lot more in common yeah. than there is different. And, and the reason for that is we are all humans. We, we all need each other. Yes. We need each other. Um, I, I, I use this example all the time that you learn to be a human from a human. You yeah. didn't learn how to walk from a dog. Right. Or a cat, you know, you learn how to walk like a human from a human, you know, and speak like a human from another human. So that means that our humanities are intertwined. Yes, they are. And, and we think that we're very different. Yeah. Oh, we're so different. And we're Not, surprised when we find out that we're so similar. It, especially in food. Yeah. People think all these, all these nationalities and all that and they think, oh, no, our foods are so different. And then you taste them and you can't tell which one's which. That's true. Because they all... They're cooked similar. They yeah. use similar spices. They, yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. But it's it's about being a friend. It's about being that. So if you want to take any advice, uh, any of the advice that we're talking about is, be true to yourself. Open up. Be vulnerable. And 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 take the first step. You want to build a, a real relationship? Take the first step. What do they 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 call that? Take the higher ground. Yes. Be the bigger man. Yeah. However way you want to word it, it's all about if I had a disagreement. You and I as brothers, mm-hmm. we've had disagreements. Yeah, yeah, true. Is that going to stop us from loving each other? No, no. It's, it's just it's been, it's been unique. Yeah. It's been unique. It's been, it's been you. And I think that... Adding as, character yeah, to that, it, that yeah. relationship. You have to have... You, you have to be able to be to open... And simply start with a smile, uh-huh. start with a good morning, and then forth and forth, and then you start... Take you the know, first step. You yeah, take the first yeah, step. And, and then get to know that person. And then you're going to find that there's a lot of stuff going on. It's funny because um, hmm. my, 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 my boss, my supervisor, mm-hmm. uh, wait, wait, guy, wait, 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 you got to say it right. Because you're from Long Island. Yeah, Long Island. No, no. Well, you're I from them, Long Island, Huntington from Huntington Station, Long Island. You have to say it right. It's your boss. It's boss. But no, actually, I'm calling the jefe. Okay? Mm-hmm. And he loves it. I call him the jefe. Uh, but the point is that uh, it's funny that you, 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 you start as a supervisor and an employee. But within a month of working, you start developing uh, a, a, a office relationship or friendship if you start, will right you start building rapport exactly it, it, and, rapport. But, but then yep. but then you start building upon it building upon it and eventually he he started sharing with me you know some difficulties that happens in, in, in everyone's mm-hmm. life yeah but that's not it's not gonna get to that point then unless you start putting into the pot 
Yeah. You see, you cannot, you cannot be that stingy. You cannot buy the pot and expect Adam to bring the dirt, expect you to bring uh, the seeds, and I'm just sitting there just looking interesting. Yeah. No, you gotta put something in it too to mm-hmm. get something back. Yep. And the problem that we have is that to build friendships, you have to start. You, know, you gotta put your gloves. Mm-hmm. Okay. You gotta put. You gotta get the pot. He you said get, he wasn't doing a metaphor. No, but I'm not. It's, it's, it's just that you have to do it. And it's the growing. It's going through the growing. Yes, but the, vibe. I'm, yeah. ju- I'm just going to look up the word <laughs> metaphor and read you the. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't. But but it's the truth. Is it start? You have to start somewhere. And then one mm-hmm. of the things that really hurts me as a believer, or as a leader, or as a Christian, if you want, if you will. It's how how dense we are, how how mm. how hypocrite to the point that we just I don't want to I don't want to get too involved with people. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, no, no, you can't do that. That Pe- is wrong. people are hurting. Yes, everyone it's hurting at any given single time. No family is perfect. No, no, no marriage is perfect. Nope. No friendship is perfect. But at some point. You have to shine the light. Yep. Okay? Not by your mouth, but what you do. Right. And it, it and with we have this mentality again, and we go back to the well, all the Puerto Ricans have to work in maintenance. No, no, no. You can go to school. See, we have to learn to turn the page. Mm-hmm. And that's what we want to do then. We want to help people turn the page. Right. Stay yeah. away from those written those written instructions that they never worked. Yeah. That they don't work. Because you make a co-worker that no one liked them. Mm-hmm. I'm still spinning in my head about that Jehovah Witness guy. I mm-hmm. will lose my mind. Right. Because if I, if I, if I go fishing by myself. Mm-hmm. Or only with the same people. Uh, it, so, okay. So, wait a minute. We can only talk about God for so long. Oh, of course. You know, no, no. At some point, we got to talk about something else. Okay. Right. So, so uh, in, in your job. Yes, if, if God gives you the opportunity to share something with you, a test with somebody, a testimony or something, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But you know, Van, that's not all the time. That's not all the time. No, we can talk about different. Like we were the other night, we were just playing uh, Call of Duty, was yeah. it, Adam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were just talking about stories of of Xavier. Yeah, you know, and we were having a good time. We we're cracking up, right? How he sabotaged. Yeah, and how he sabotaged the whole okay. situation, and he yeah. did. He admitted. Yeah, he did. But 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 Van. It's what what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that unless I have that friendship with Xavier, mm-hmm. it's not gonna flourish next to the next step. Mm-hmm. I had to take the step, right? And we are supposed well, to. You do always that. have to start. And the thing yes. is that the thing is, so you, you gotta you gotta build that trust. You gotta yeah. build. You gotta take the first step. You gotta take the high ground. You gotta yes. do all these things. Um, but there's there's a one element, and, and I wanna I wanna bring oh. this um, to light. And that is, you do all of that without expecting anything in return. Oh, please say that, that again. Say that again. No, say that again. Say that, say that again. Say, that is that is the key. You do everything without expecting anything in return. So you don't. You don't. You're not doing it because you stand to gain something. Yeah. You I never. Th- you never think about Ooh. your own personal gain. Nope. You're nope. always thinking about your friends personal game yes I, I, what they I lo- what, what they a great ex- point it, it well that's what defines a great friendship yes it's someone who goes above and, the, uh, and beyond i have a, a, a good again i go back to co-workers um that we, we became very good friends and i was it, my title on this job was lieutenant i was in charge of of a building and his title was sergeant so i became the new lieutenant I replaced the old lieutenant, and there was a lot of issues with that lieutenant. So when I took over, uh, him and, uh, as a sergeant, him and I immediately hit it off. So I, I showed that I cared yes. by teaching them because the person I replaced didn't trust anybody, so he, would, he wouldn't teach anybody how to do anything. He would do it himself. See, again, we go, we go back to the seeds. No, no trust. No, no trust. trust. So oh my God. I, immediately I was like, no, because I'm not getting the phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning so I can walk you through on how to do something. I'm going to teach you how to do it yeah. so that you know how to do it because that empowers you 
as a person. Yes. See, you stand to gain from this. Yes. Right? Yeah, there might be some gain for me because what I'm gaining is don't call me at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's not necessarily a gain for me. The, the real gain is you liberating yourself from, from this fear of me, I don't know how to do my job. And, and you, when you empower people, they, they stay with you. Yes. So the thing is, so I show him, and, and we worked together for several years, uh, and then he had to move back to um, down south in the U.S. And I remember for my birthday, he showed up, and, you know, we love the Mets. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, we're Mets fans. We're Mets fans. We're, we're from Long Island, New York. Grew up as Mets fans. Hey. I do not despise the Yankees, but I root for the Mets. Anyways, so he knew this, so he went out and made me a blanket. Wow. He made me a blanket, which I think I still have somewhere. Wow. Maybe, maybe it has died. I don't know. It's no, been no, a I long think, time. I think we have it. It's, it's been a long time. But he goes out of his way to do this. Do you know that this, this lovely man, who I still have on Facebook, for my birthday, he still sends me a message and always calls me lieutenant. And I told him, I said, listen, I'm not your lieutenant anymore. You can, and he goes, I don't care. You will forever be my lieutenant. That's all. So he still calls me lieutenant. It's, it's, uh, because you know that, that uh, uh, Van, you... Uh, Long-lasting friendships. I am, I'm spinning in my head because... You, don't, the forget, last, don't forget your address. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be held responsible. No, no, my wife is driving. But uh, the reason why I said <laughs> this is because... The last point you brought at the, uh, two minutes ago, mm -hmm. you got to do all this not expecting something back. Right. And I'm tired of that. If everyone thinks it's all in life is all about, I'll give you something, you get back something. It's a trade. No. Just, that's why understanding salvation is a problem because they think, mm -hmm. okay, so if I behave, God likes me. No, God loves you whether you behave or you don't behave. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, the same uh, uh, concept applies to a, to a friendship. I mean, Christ is the, the prime example yes. of a best friend. He, he put his life on the line. What, he, what did he gain? Because he's still God. Yes. He didn't gain anything. He, he's still God. We were the ones who got everything. Yes. We received salvation. We were pardoned. We were forgiven. We were redeemed. Regardless of our past, regardless of Didn't how matter. we came. And you know something? We're supposed to model the same concept, Adam, when we interact with people. If you call the, yourself a Christian, yeah, you exactly. have to be Christ-like. Like. And, and, and we, the moment you see someone, you want to build, because you can have friendship at the job, it could flourish into something better. You can have friendship at church. Mm -hmm. I have friends at church that I met that are still my friends. Uh, Frankie Sanchez. For Frankie. Frankie's Frankie, been our friend for like, for like 30 years. Almost right? 30 years. Yes. And we met at church. And we had so many. And Frankie is a bizarre person. Mm -hmm. Super fun to be around. But mm -hmm. we have that common sense. Um, mm -hmm. or that, that common that commodity. Mm -hmm. that, that we developed through the years. Yeah. Right. And, it, and that's what we need to do. is like. There's people that go to church, sit in a pew, enjoy the service, go back out, get back home, and they never say hello. Or if they say hello, it was a, like a cold hello. Right. You know, you can't do that. Yeah. If they said yeah. hello, it's because the pastor or whoever's preaching says, say, turn to the person exactly. next to you and say hi. There you go. Oh, oh, because some of them, they book it out. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is Which, that by the way, is... One of the things, if I guess if we can have pet peeves as Christians, is one of the things that I absolutely do not like is listening to a pastor or a preacher that makes me have, have to exercise. Because uh, I, I turn to the next person and say, can you just can preach? Can you please repeat this? Yeah. And I was like, you, <laughs> Dude, let me why? hear you no. say this. Let, can I hear somebody say this? Well, you did, did you hear me? Well, you just said it. Yeah. And you have a microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well, I yes. think I heard you. But but it's I love that I love that line. It's, it's, do what you do, not expecting. Don't go into a, a build a friendship, expecting the same person or the person next to you or your neck or your new friend to meet you halfway. Yeah. 
like no, it, go all the way. Go go, go, go all you, the way. You go first. Yeah, you go first, and, and, and you and you show first on the on the next seat. Mm -hmm. Ready? Be sincere. Don't be a fake person. I don't like I, Ben. I don't like fake people. No, I mean it's funny you say that because that's exactly what I was thinking. And when when right. you act that way, when you act that, way, I know it's this, this this thing here. You know, hey, listen, the three brain cells are still working, still work well enough. Yeah. For me to English well. Yeah, it's, I, I got you. Um, for the really? For the really. For the really. Um, but he, here's the thing. And, and I love saying that. Um, when, you, when, you, uh, when you have something to gain, and, and that is the only reason why you want to befriend somebody, your fakeness yes. uh, comes shows up. out. Comes, comes out. out. Oh. And, and, and you, I'm sure you've had friends like that. I, I have friends like that. Yeah. You get and the, we've been hurt by people like that too. You of get course. these people; they always have to finish everything you say. They always they they have to one up you. Blah blah blah. Th those people are not your friends. They 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 have you around because they have to bounce things off of you, or they or or they themselves are so insecure that they need to have somebody to validate them. Yeah. But but they don't they don't care for your needs. They don't care. They don't even care to know you. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm almost done with my brain before I die out. Um, my batteries are dying out somewhat, but I'm gonna give you an, a, a good example, Ben. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use his name because he's a good friend of mine. Uh, name is Carlos. All right. Carlos came from a different church uh, to our church. This is about five years ago or so, four years ago. So he's coming from an environment that he's used to. He fell in love with one of the sisters of our church, mm. and he decided to stay in the in the church. Uh, and the, immediately when I saw him, he looked like a, like like not insecure, but you know, like you're in this new place. Right. What? Shy. What? You're shy. You're you shy. You know. You, you don't, don't know what to expect. Exactly, because because you know people. So of course, me being Wesso, I approach. What are you doing? You know what's going on? And then immediately because. I know the sister that he was dating. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like, you know, let me approach the guy, start talking. Then we became great friends. We played domino together mm -hmm. uh, to the point that. Have Thanksgiving together. Thanksgiving together. But no, but wait, wait, but listen to what happens when you simply pour into people with not expecting nothing back. Mm -hmm. His domino's partner was his father-in-law who taught him how to play dominoes. He dumped his father-in-law partner to become my partner. Why would he do that? I guess because we, because we built it. See, because you got to put, I did not approach him expecting yeah. something from him. I just saw the need. I saw the, the, the you know, like, what do I do? Let me approach the guy. Yeah. Today, hey, we're going to have, we have fun together. In the summer, we play dominoes together. And we are always having something. It's amazing. It's it's beautiful. It's a clean, beautiful friendship. And I call him, text him. We talk whenever he's yeah. going through some difficulties. We call each other. He's a great guy to be around. That's an example of uh, what a relationship should be. Yes. So if you have that within the church, then there should be a reason why you don't have that outside of church. And we need to. That's the, no we need, need to attack no, I mean, that. Uh, not, not no need, but there's no reason for you right, to exactly. not do that. Like if you're able to do that at, with somebody at church, then mm -hmm. there shouldn't be a reason why you cannot do that with somebody outside of church. Exactly. Because if you could see how powerful that bond, that connection was with within the church, imagine just how much more powerful that somebody into the world that. Um, doesn't have that all the time. That yes. I feel like constantly has to live in, with their head in their swivel and constantly is in attack mode because there's no love out there. Yes. You know, they're looking for, they have to watch out for their backs. Yes. You know, yes. it's a different, it's different when you have somebody who believes in Christ that comes with their ar arms extended and wants to just help, just to help. Yes. That sticks with you. It, yes. Not not yes. what you're talking about in a book. Who care, the, who care for you when nobody did. Yes, exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah, yes. No, I, I love it. I think this is, it's a great point that the I hope that you found these uh sound this the sound advice yes. of of just being open, build on trust, never expect anything back. I, love that. That I, I hope great. that you found this to be a useful to your life. I know it has been for us for, yes. for many years. So yes. um the whole the whole point of this particular episode is to bring those to you. Um hopefully you've enjoyed it. 
Um, this has been fun. Next week, I think, because we, we were going to talk about marriages also. And yes. I think like the, the line was good for friendship and marriages because essentially that's what a marriage I, I is. I think so. I think so. 100%. Um, but I, I think this was a good episode to, to focus on one. And yes. then yes. next week, we can focus on marriages. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um, so we don't want to, we don't want to close it out without always praying yes, yeah. yes. for people. So, um, if you have any illnesses, if you're going through anything, I uh, just believe that, that God can do yes. what he can do in your life. There is no limit to his power. So I want to just pray for you. We're going to pray for you. And, uh, we just, you, oh, the only thing we ask is that you believe, believe it and it's going to happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, thank you for Lord. this opportunity for us to be All here to and you. do this and for your glory. You. Lord, we present I, whatever the situation may be that the listeners or, or the, the viewers are going through. We ask Bless them. that your power, Holy Spirit, would, would pour upon them, Hallelujah. that they would have a, a, a peaceful life, a sacrifice that you Christ. would bless them abundantly. In Jesus name. Now, I speak right now, I speak directly thank into you. any illness that thank may be Jesus affecting name. The bodies of the people that are watching or listening. In the name of Jesus, illness, I order you, I order you to disappear, to leave those bodies. You do not have any authority. By his stripes, the word says, we are healed. healed. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we believe it. Amen Amen. and amen. Amen. Well, Van, this is being a phenomenal, phenomenal. I loved it. It was great. Amen. Uh, So we want to take this time to remind you that, you know, we definitely would appreciate a like or a subscribe. Yes. Uh, Share it with somebody. Um, There's a lot of negativity out there. Please share this with somebody who needs that positivity in their lives. We want to thank you so much for taking your time. And uh, hopefully next week we'll we'll see you again here. Yes. Well, I'm looking forward to it. And again, remember, all information to links and stuff like that are are always going to be in the description. If you're looking for a church, you you are more than welcome to to join our church, even if you're not a Christian, if you just want to be able to to learn more. If you are, if you're not, it doesn't matter. Our information is there. Uh, We're all online. You don't need to have a camera. You don't need to have a fancy setup. All we want to do is, you know, bring the word to people. Yes. Um, Just be so, a blessing. Yeah, be a blessing. It's uh, If you don't want to join our Discord, that's totally fine. If you don't want to have to do all that, you can go to our Facebook. We have uh, Sunday services are on there. If you don't, we also have the YouTube channel for our church there, too. Live services for our Sunday services go there. Every Sunday we go live, and the video is uploaded. Um, on Facebook, we do on Mondays. Mm-hmm, we do correct. the Bible study. 7.30, mm-hmm. all Eastern Standard. We live in the, the East Coast here in, uh, in in New York. Um, so it's always Eastern Standard time. In New York. Um, so yeah, so um, if anything... Oh, and then always check out my uh, my cousin, uh, Pastor Nelson's uh, Eric's son. Uh, he's a, he's a, min- a great minister. He's got his music, his platform. All of it is uh, always tagged uh, in, in the description of the video. So just go down there. You'll see it as Eric uh, M. Ministries. Uh, and then as well as mine, Adam yes. Melendez, coming out with more music soon. All right. And uh, I'm excited for you guys to meet Eric. He's uh, scheduled to be on here in a few weeks. Uh, and he'll play some of his music and, and we'll have a great co- conversation uh, with him yes. uh, in the upcoming weeks. So It's going to be awesome. awesome. Sounds good. It's Sounds a good. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I believe it. Hey. I know so, it. I know it. Thank you so much for joining us again. And again, last thing that I'll say. Hit the uh, thumbs up and maybe a subscribe. That would be fantastic. It will help. God bless. God God bless bless you guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.